Hello everyone, Mason the Rock Henderson here again. Uh, I wanted to film this right after I got done with the episode because it was, I, I really want to capture the emotion that this episode really brought. Um, and it's not something that I can say for all Criminal Minds episodes. Uh, they've really kind of gone back and forth between really hard-hitting episodes and then episodes that just you can't really get into. Um, but this one really, the way it ended mainly, really captured just my attention, my emotion, all of it. Um, but anyway, story itself, just there's a, uh, a cold case from Las Vegas, New Mexico. Uh, four teenagers killed and the place was torched afterwards. Um, girls sexually assaulted, all shot in the head. Um, and then... This is a few years later, present day, another case, almost exactly, uh, same MO, all that stuff. Um, and so, assume either it's a copycat or it's the same people, uh, not sure which one. So they travel to Las Vegas, New Mexico, which is weird that there's a Las Vegas, New Mexico. Um, but this was a, a better episode, I think, than last week's, uh, which was very much another another same old, same old episode um, about the, the bride and stuff, uh, because it was really kind of interesting. You weren't really sure at first. You know, you, you met the killers, but you weren't really sure about them. Uh, you weren't sure about their motivations. You weren't sure what they were doing together. Um, come to find out that one of the guys in this group of two was a part of the cold case, uh, but he and his partner got arrested, and he got out with this other guy, and they kind of formed a bond in prison, and now they're doing it. And uh, two two things to just kind of throw in there that I really liked. Uh, for one, you got to see a bit more of what Aisha Tyler's character brings to the team. Uh, she was listening to the voicemail left by one of the girls. Uh, she, she called her parents and left a voicemail, and she was listening to it, and she was able to pinpoint voices. So you can kind of tell that's where one of her strengths is. Um, and it reminded me of the first episode where she heard the wife's voice and was able to kind of replicate it. Uh, so obviously she has a very good ear for stuff like that. And then also we get to see kind of uh, reads how his mind works, which they've shown us before, but... It's, it's just nice to see it sometimes because he's looking over these pictures and he sees this and he sees this. And you can see his mind working uh, the way they shot, like shot the whole scene was pretty clever. Uh, really captured, like I said, his, his mind, how it works. Uh, and you, you get, you know, he figures out more stuff about them. But anyway, basically, you go through the episode some you know some stuff is the same uh, they have a cop there who kind of struggling under the pressure of the job drinking a lot and obviously Rossi catches on instantly um, kind of tells him to just take a night off uh, drink some actual coffee and I like how it comes into play later but I'll get to that one of the things that was really where they were going to do uh, they had I think I guess it was the dad of one of the the victims from the cold case was there I believe I'm not really sure how he was related but I was really worried he was gonna be one of those stereotypical parents that like why didn't you do anything to save her like why haven't these guys been caught ah, and just throw a fit he seemed like he was gonna be one of those characters um, but thankfully didn't go that route uh, they've done that so many times in the show that when I see it again, I'm like, oh, can you people just calm down? <laughs> you know, like, these people are doing the best they can, they're the best of the business. It's not their fault. You're just obviously lashing out, and at the end of the episode, obviously, most of the time, it, I'm sorry, I lashed out, I was upset, blah, blah, blah. Um, but they didn't do that this time, so, good note there. Um, and, you know, the at first, the villains themselves seemed a little too just oh we're just doing this because 
I, I want to, you know, get high. I want to, you know, do coke. I want to do some meth. And that seemed to be their only, like, reason for robbing this place. And um, and they do explain later that the drugs that they've been taking kind of cause a psychosis. And that's why they were doing these crazy things. And one of them, one of them looks so familiar to me. And I know you guys have... <laughs> If you watch TV a lot or you watch movies a lot, you see people and you're like, I know them from somewhere. Uh, and you're just, you've seen the face, you can't remember. That was one of the bad guys. I uh, couldn't remember, had to look him up. He's on Justified. Um, one of, not really a main character, but he was on there a, quite a few times uh, for a couple seasons, actually. But anyway, that's just, that's just me talking about stuff that I notice. Um go on in the episode one of the guys that's not like super crazy drug guy um he goes off to see this girl that he you know was with before he went to jail the first time and gets there she has a kid he instantly assumes it's his um but you know she obviously kicks him out and says go away I'm calling the cops uh while the other partner who is the new guy that he met in prison he wasn't involved in the first one just goes into a convenience store and as soon as he walks in you're like that's the new guy because he's not very smart um but he goes into like a you know like a uh, cvs type store they have a bunch of stuff you know for him to crush up and typical bad guy mistakes i guess if you're that crazy on drugs you're gonna make stupid mistakes like that so it wasn't pro probably the weakest part of the episode, in my opinion. Just, why why would you do something so stupid? Well, because he's a crazy drug addict. Okay, I'll, I'll accept it, I guess. Um, but they kind of figure out that one of the new patterns, like making victims watch the other murders, they figure out that that's kind of that guy's thing. Um, and that's how they're able to find him, is they go and they look up who made their victims watch him find that out so that's how they find him and then obviously they find out about uh, the partner and the other partner that was involved in the cold case so that's how they figure all everything out and you know typical just <laughs> Garcia pulling it out of nowhere like oh yeah there's four people two of them are dead one of them here's their backstory and I, I don't know if that's how it really works in the FBI if you can just and that's it. Oh, look, there's your whole backstory. I know everything. But it, that's how the show works, so... I don't know why I'm bringing that up. It, it's, it's been doing that forever. Um, but, anyway, getting to the end. Uh, they finally... The, the guy that went to prison for the cult case... Uh, and then got back out. He... It, it, uh, kind of separates from the other partner because um, they they rob a convenience store and they have a disagreement on whether to shoot this guy with his son right there and because he thinks he has a son now um, he refuses to do it and the other guy gets pissed off about it and so they separate and he goes back to his girl and his son which they never really confirmed whether or not it was his son like she just kind of said, yes, this is your son. Is that what you want to hear? So, I guess it was his son. I don't know, nitpicking again. But, you know, he kidnaps them, takes them, which you know, kind of drives the whole thing forward. And then, of course, they end up in this one place, which I don't know how, but the partner tracks him there, um, which I thought was really weird. It was like, how did you track them that far and not get noticed? Because New Mexico is a lot of open road. If you saw a motorcycle behind you, I'm pretty sure you would assume it's your partner. So I don't know how he tracked him, but he did. Uh, but they go to like this camping area, and the partner shows up, and the FBI is showing up right then too. Uh, and instead of surrendering, the new guy is like going out on a bicycle, right? wow, uh, which totally fits his character. D drug addict, crazy guy. Of course, he's gonna go out in a blaze of glory. Um, so you know they start shooting. Um, the 
other guy decides, you know what, I'll do it too. Starts shooting at the FBI, so they get the mom and the son out of the way. And this is where I really like what they did with the, the main cop, the, the guy that was, you know, getting drunk all the time at the, at the station, and Rossi kind of helped him out. He's sitting there with us, like, it's like a hunting rifle, looks like. Um, but he's at the top of a hill scoping him out. And it, they they do it so well because he takes the, uh, the drug addict guy out first. And then when the other guy comes to, like, check on him, you know, he's pretty much bleeding out. He got hit somewhere uh, pretty bad. And so the other guy pops up and starts, you know, shotgun at everybody and pulls out a pistol, starts shooting. And cop takes another shot and takes him down too. And then they they start playing Amazing Grace, uh, this, this girl singing it with no instrumental at all. And he kind of stands up, Rossi's like right next to him, uh, kind of scoping him out with the binoculars. And he he's holding the rifle in one hand and he puts up his other hand and it's not shaking at all and no words needed just the fact that you know if he if Rossi had not helped him out if he had not gone home and sobered up that whole day could have turned out so much worse and I like that they tied that together they didn't have to they could have turned it into a problem they could have turned it into the sheriff you know I'm the sheriff I'll drink if I want but they didn't you know they they made it part of the episode they made it mean something to the main story and they don't do it that often they really don't if i if i'm thinking about it it's just a lot of the time it's some sheriff who's just power hungry who i'll drink if i want at work and they have a disagreement with you know fbi and eventually they decide oh i was wrong but this was like you could see the consequences of making the right choice and i like that you know i wish they would do that more often uh, and then the way they, like, like I was saying before, the way they end it was really, really touching. Um, and they, not that they've never done this before, but you just had this girl singing, you know, no instruments at all. She's still singing Amazing Grace. And you have the candlelight, like, vigil for the, for the kids that got killed recently. And... You know, all all of the the BAU is there, and it just they don't do that very often. Uh, they have done, you know, they've done funerals before, they've done vigils before, but they don't do it that often. And so when they do it, it really just plucks at the heart. You know, like it just really gets to you uh, to see all of that, all of the emotion that's there, all of the really the connection that they have to the cases because oftentimes it's like okay solve time to go home and they're in the plane and that's it this is like so they solve the case and it's a very small town so you know it's kind of like everybody knows everybody here and to see them stick around and actually go to the candlelight vigil um, and you know seeing the different because, you know, the whole religion thing is played a part in some episodes. And, you know, Rossi has faith. You know, Derek struggles with faith. And you get to see both of them. You know, Rossi doing the, uh, the I'm not going to try it because I don't want <laughs> to do it wrong. And, yeah, that would be bad. Uh, but the, the cross sign that most, like, Catholics do and stuff. And then you see Derek just kind of come up and like, touch the, uh, the casket and, you can just tell by the look on his face, like he's just, you, you can tell he's wrestling with some stuff. And like I said, they, they don't do this enough. And I really wish they would do, obviously not too much, because you don't want to have every episode be like a, oh, that was heavy, man. Because <laughs> it really, really does get heavy if you do it too often. But it's nice to see him do, do it in the midst of all of this. Um... But yeah, it was very, it was a good episode. Uh, very pleasing to see them not stick to the same old cliches like they did kind of last week. Last week just felt phoned in a little bit as far as the case goes. This one actually had some interesting turns and twists. Um, but yeah, it was a good episode. 
and I'm looking forward to next week. Uh, really get me, I guess, more into this season than last season did, uh, which is always good news because never want my favorite shows to take a turn downhill, which I will be talking a bit about tomorrow because I will be talking about one of my favorite shows that has taken a turn downhill. Um, so tomorrow going to get Bones and Blacklist, and I will see you guys then. Peace.